back and look at that for whatever reason. Okay, there we go. Properties of limits, theorem 2.2. Um, you're going to see these properties crop up over and over and over again. In fact, there's one more down here that uh, you can't see, so let me move this up so you can look at it. It's called the power one. Let's go to the top again. It says, let B and C be real numbers. Okay, well, C is that constant, that input value that we're going to be approaching. Um, let f and g be functions with the following limits. So as x approaches c for the function x, the outputs are going to the value l, whatever l would represent. Uh, for the function g, as x approaches that same value, the function g is approaching some value k. So you know we could have f of x uh, is approaching the number 2 and g of x is approaching negative 1, whatever. Okay. What happens then under these conditions? Well, one of these is called scalar multiplication. Scalar multiplication indicates that there is some factor, some factor, some multiplier that we're going to apply to everything in the problem. In this case, we're going to apply that. We're going to take the multiplier and apply it to all of the outputs in our, in our problem. So we would have... Um, Oh, let's say that we've got um, f of x is equal to x squared, and let's say that b is equal to 4. So this would indicate that we have 4 times f of x, or in other words, 4x squared. All of my outputs will just be multiplied by the value of 4, including the limit. Okay? So if, if the outputs are approaching this value L and everything's getting multiplied by 4, then of course that value would also. So if you know what the limit is of the function, just multiply it by 4. Now you could also do this, B times the limit as X approaches C of F of X. That's basically what this is representing because L represents the limit of f of x as x approaches c. So you can bring that scalar multiplier out in front. Sum or difference. This says that if we have the sum or difference of two functions, we take the limit of the sum or difference, we have the sum or difference of their limits. Now, we work with sums and differences all the time, and we don't really think much about it. Um, suppose, and I'll make this h of x, Suppose h of x is, um, I will make, make it x squared plus, and I used 3x here. Okay, so this is um, f of x, and this is g of x. Individually, f of x is a polynomial, g of x is a polynomial. You add those together, you get a polynomial. Yeah. Um, more importantly, um, if I know the limit of f of x, which I do is L, and I know the limit of g of x, and that's k, then I can just add the limits of, or the sum of their limits. So we could break them apart into separate functions and work with them individually. What we're going to do is say, eh, that's it. for this example, not all, not all, but in this example, it's just another polynomial. I can use direct substitution, and it will be the same thing. Product? Same way. The limit of the products is the product of the limits. Quotient, same thing, but you've got to be careful. Okay? You've got to be careful. You cannot have a zero denominator. So you cannot have the limit of g of x to be zero. If it is, eh, maybe there's another way we can work the problem. But uh, we would not be able to do direct substitution. And to a power, Again, if this is, if you know what this is, just take the limit to a power. You're going to see this set of items, this property, this theorem, over and over and over again this semester. We're going to see the same ones with derivatives, the same ones 
with integrals, uh, the same thing with, uh, well, but there's quite a few of the math that we get into. So be familiar with it. Okay. Um, I think we probably need to uh, do this next one because I showed the other section something. I forgot to show this to you. So we're going to do it uh, here. So let's look at, uh, we're going to say f of x, and we're going to let uh, f of x equal, um, I will say x, and I have uh, g of x, and I made g of x equal to x squared minus 2. Okay, so we're going to open up a uh, calculator page, and let's just, in fact, uh, because I have F1, F2, and so forth, I'm going to do a new problem. So I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to go to document, and this is on the black one, on the uh, gray one, you do control home, and I'm going to insert a new problem, and then make that a calculator. Again, this just helps it be clean. I can then go back and use F1 of X again. Remember how to define? Go to Menu. Go to Actions. Define. And we're going to define um, F1 of X to equal, uh, what did I say, X. And we'll define F2 of X to be equal to x squared, uh, what did I say, minus 2. Okay. Maybe you found this for yourselves. I know I've shown you the um, template um, palette, and so you can go there. Uh, on the black one here, we just press this key right here called the template palette. On the gray one, you have to do a control on the multiplication, I believe it is, and get the template palette. Okay. In the template palette, we've got the limit right down here. So we'll press enter on that. And we're going to uh, look at, let me go back to my notes here, we're going to look at the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x plus g of x. Okay, so we'll say as x and then tab approaches 1, tab, now remember this other little uh, location point is for plus or minus so that uh, we can say from the you know less than one side or from the greater than one side. We're just going to have it from both. So we're going to tab over. And I want to, uh, to look at the limit of this. Let's first start with F1 of X. We'll just get these out individually. So the limit of F1 of X as X approaches 1 should be one of those basic limits there, it's polynomial, should be 1. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing with um, F2 of X. So go in and you can either find that template again or you can just go up and copy it again. Um, F2 of X as X approaches 1 should be, again it's a polynomial, so we can use just uh, direct substitution on this. So we should have uh, negative 1 as our, okay? So let's see what happens, and sure enough, it is. Yeah? Okay, um, you have to go back. Make sure you have F1 of X on both of those. And make sure you've got x and x squared minus 2. We're not dividing or anything. We're just finding the limit. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back up now. And um, if, I, if I do this successfully, when I add these two limits together, I should get 0. Okay. That would be equivalent to saying f of x 
plus g of the limit of f of x plus the limit of g of x. So what we're doing is this one. Okay, so we have 1 plus negative 1, and our answer should be 0. Now, we could also look at the limit as x approaches 1 of x plus x squared minus 2, and just make those substitutions. f of x is x, g of x is x squared minus 2. We've got the limit as x approaches 1 of, and this would be x squared plus x minus 2. Are we going to get 0? You know, this is a polynomial again. Are we going to get 0 when we put that in? Well, 1 plus 1 is 2, minus 2 should be 0 also. And if we go in here and look at that, there we go. Our answer would be zero. I wanted to show this to you because I want you to know that you can check your, your answers by looking at the template here. Uh, this is not necessarily showing me or showing you that you understand it, but it's one way of checking your answers. And that's not a, a minor thing when we get to more complicated problems. Okay. Do we need to look at some of the others? Well, let's look at one other. Let's look at one other here. Let's go down here. There we go. Um, let's look at the limit as x approaches um, the square root of 2 of um, f of x divided by g of x. And keep in mind what f of x and g of x are. And I've changed the value here so we can't go back and just say, well, it's 1 divided by negative 1. I've made it the square root of 2. This would be the same thing as, as saying the limit as x approaches the square root of 2 of x divided by the limit as x approaches the square root of 2 of x squared minus 2. So we can also think of it as breaking it up into two limits. These are polynomials, square root of 2, numerator, denominator, the square root of 2 squared is 2. Now this one, I agree, would be undefined. Did you get yours to work? Okay. So we would have then that this, the limit here is undefined, or it does not exist. Now why doesn't it exist? We probably want to go back and look at the um, look at the graph of this. Could be that we have a vertical asymptote. And those is, those happen when we have a zero denominator. Okay, I'm almost gonna watch the time here. Okay, I think we'll.